All right, we've got another poem. Let's take a look. Uh, it's from Maggie Pogue Johnson's 1910 poem, Poem of Our Race. In this poem, the speaker is addressing Paul Lawrence Dunbar, a black author. Okay. Thou, with stroke of mighty pen, hast told of joy and mirth. Okay, so mighty pen, joy, mirth. And read the hearts and souls of men as cradled from their birth. Well, that seems impressive. The language of the flowers, thou hast read them all, and even the little brook responded to thy call. This is a compliment, right? This is a, this is like, you know, in, uh, yeah, I would just say that, like, that's, like, that's the word, compliment to Dunbar, right? It's saying he's good, right? He's mighty pen, he's talking to the flowers, so, you know, there's, it's, it's a poem, so it's not very literal, but still, it's saying that he's doing good things as another poet, I guess. Um, yeah, as, an, as a writer uh, who's, I guess, done good things with his pen, did, done good writing. Uh, so let's take a look at the answer's main purpose, to praise a certain writer for being especially perceptive regarding people in nature. So the first part definitely matches with what we've said. The second part's getting a little detailed, and it, and it makes me a little nervous, but maybe it makes sense, right? He's read the hearts and souls of men. That might be being perceptive with people. And then the language of the flowers seems to support the idea of being perceptive with nature. Um, I wouldn't just write out pick this, but it's got a lot of things in its favor. Let's see if there's anything better. Uh, choice B, to establish that a certain writer has read extensively about a variety of topics. Well, we're not talking about what he's read. We're talking about what he's written, right? His mighty pen. He's he's writing. So I, I don't really know. Now, extensively is another word here that kind of scares me mostly because it's kind of a quantifying word. And I know that those things are, are worth looking at when I've got these wrong answer choices, right? Did he read extensively about these? We have no quantifying uh, information about how much Dunbar has read about anything. He, we're just kind of getting this weird poem about how great he is. Um, C, to call attention to a certain writer's careful and elaborately detailed writing process, turn this choice into a question. What's his process? I don't know, right? It says he writes well, but it doesn't say his process for writing, right? So if you can't, if you can turn a choice into a question and then you cannot answer that question using the lines, it's not a good sign for the choice, right? So a lot of these things, when you when you think maybe a noun isn't mentioned, turn it into a question and see if you can answer it, and you'll probably see that it's wrong. D, to recount fond memories of an afternoon spent in nature with a certain writer. Well, this is not literal. The, the, the author of the poem is not necessarily with this person. I guess they're addressing him, but we don't know if that's in person or just kind of like you know, how you, you know, you're, you're kind of saying thank you to someone who's not there. I don't know. Um, specifically, we can do the same thing with this choice that we do with C. If there's fond memories, what are they? What are the fond memories? They're, they're not talking about a specific time when he wrote something down or wrote about flowers. Like, it's just, it's just way too specific. So A is better. Um, I understand if you're kind of between maybe like A and D, like I can see why people would be drawn to D, but we have so many better matches in A, things that we can actually prove where in order to justify D, we kind of have to go beyond the lines and start imagining a story that isn't explicitly there. And when you catch yourself doing that, that's probably a sign that you're falling for a trap or going too far. So try to stick to choices that are provable just blatantly, explicitly, with the lines that you're given, without any reasoning inside your head beyond the most simple stuff. And that's usually how you get your right answers.